Well, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, this is uh, this is fantastic, isn't it, to be able to to see everyone and um, just give everyone a, a very warm welcome to our Easter Sunday morning service here at the Beacon Church, Ashton in Makerfield. Uh, my name's Glyn, and I'm an elder here at the church. And um, we do give you a special warm welcome if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not a regular here at the Beacon. And we hope that you'll be blessed as uh, as you watch us. <clears throat> I wonder, uh, have you been waking up lately trying to remember uh, what day is it today? Because all days just seem to be the same and, uh, and you lose track. It's just another day in isolation. What am I going to do? It's, uh, it's like Groundhog Day. Well, not, not today. Today is, is not one of those days. Today is a most special day. Today is the day that we meet to celebrate that Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. And I know that some of you have just said that. It's just fantastic. We're gathered together, although we're not in our usual building at Stubbs Cross, but we're each in our own home, separate, separated by miles. Yet through the wonders of technology and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we are together. For we're all one in Christ Jesus. We're the body of believers coming together in worship. And the risen Jesus is right here in our midst. So this morning, let's be a beacon of light. Wherever we are, as we celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive, he's conquered death, and he's victorious over sin. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. It's great this morning as we do our first live service, we celebrate that Jesus is alive. As we've said, it's really wonderful to be able to see so many who've managed to get to grips with Zoom and join us. And I'm just scanning faces just to see who's already been at the Easter eggs, which of the kids have already been at the Easter eggs. And I see people with bunny ears and it's just, uh, it's just wonderful to see you all. As we begin our service, I just want to read 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 to 8. So if you've got your Bibles with you and you want to turn to that, then that's great. Otherwise, just sit back and listen as I, <clears throat> as I read. The Apostle Paul says, says this. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that, that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen to sleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, just the one abnormally born. Amen. Amen. Have no doubts, <coughs> Jesus is alive. After he rose from the dead, and before his ascension, he appeared to lots of people who were eyewitnesses to the fact that Jesus was alive. He had risen from the dead. They could see him. They could hear him. They could touch him. They could see the scars in his hands and in his side. Jesus was dead, but is alive. Yeah. In this uncertain time in which we're living, there's one thing we can be sure of, and that is Jesus is alive today. We celebrate that fact. Our speaker this morning is Anthony, but before he comes to speak, John Lutus is going to pray for us. Mark Tither will then tell us the songs, <coughs> excuse me, the songs he's chosen to accompany this morning's service and why he's chosen those songs. The songs will be on our Facebook web, web page later, and we encourage you to give them a listen and, uh, and maybe even sing along with them after the service. After Mark, Jenny Winston Lay will bring us our Bible reading and then Anthony will speak to us. So without further ado, John, would you please commit our time to the Lord and open in prayer for us. And don't forget to unmute before you start. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Greetings John. from me and Sue. Hope you have a, a lovely Easter Sunday day. This is a great time of the year, isn't it? Just a quick one. The only Zoom I ever knew as a kid was a lolly ice. And those of you of a certain age will remember them. Multicoloured 
So this is all very new technology. But can I just say, this is a real privilege to be able to meet like this. It's lovely to see all your faces, all the families, and just to catch up with people, even if it's only through the, the, the wonders of technology. So this is a glorious day, and we are really privileged people. So let's be, come before our Father, give thanks, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this Easter time. We thank you for your great love for us, perfectly expressed through Jesus, who loved us and gave himself for us. We thank you for him who set aside heaven's glory and came to this earth to live and to die in order that we might know what it is to be forgiven of our sin and to have a home in heaven. We thank you especially for the empty tomb this morning. We thank you for the fact that we serve a risen saviour. We thank you for the knowledge that we've been ransomed. We've been bought with the precious blood of Christ. We've been healed from the sickness of sin through his sacrifice. We've been restored to a full relationship with our Father God. And we've been forgiven our sin. And we've not just been forgiven our sin, but we've been cleansed from all unrighteousness. What blessings these are, Father, and we thank you for them. And we thank you that our salvation is nothing of ourselves, but it's all of Jesus, our risen Saviour, who even now is seated at your right hand, making intercession for people like us. We thank you that we've got such a great high priest. Father, we thank you that your eyes are always upon us. We thank you that your ears are always open to hear us. We thank you that you love us with an, with an all-encompassing love that never turns us away, that never tires of us, that you're always more willing to listen to our prayers than we are to pray them. We thank you for this wonderful access to you, our great Heavenly Father. We thank you that it's all because of Jesus. Our hope today is in the resurrection of Jesus because we know that come what may, we are yours not just for time, but we are yours for eternity. And all this is possible because of Jesus. We thank you this day, Father, for all the blessings that you pour out on us, for the material blessings of homes where we can isolate. We thank you for, clear, for running water where we can just simply wash our hands to help us to avoid this dreadful virus that's um, taken over the whole world. We thank you for the abundance of food that we can easily access. Father, we are people well blessed and we thank you for it. But we understand that not many in this world have access such as we do, especially those living in places like Africa and especially in Asia. And so, Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters in these lands that they would know your presence at this Easter time and that you would help and protect them and cause them to rejoice in your name. And Father, we pray for our world, for our land gripped by this virus. And we ask that you would use this, this time, to your glory and for your honour. That the gospel seed that has been sown in many, many places throughout this world would start to bear fruit as you give the increase. And men and women seek to make sense of this crisis. And Lord, we ask that there would be a great turning towards you. For all the online sermons this day, Lord, we pray that you bless them and we, you, you use them to speak into the hearts and minds of people who may not normally enter a church. And Lord, that you would cause them to see the risen Lord Jesus Christ and their need of him. We pray for our leaders this morning, Lord, and we, ask, uh, and we thank you for the Prime Minister's ongoing recovery. And Lord, we pray that you would save him we pray that you would grant wisdom and direction to all those who seek to lead us. And we also pray for all those people who are working to heal the sick, to feed the nation. And we ask, Father, that you bless them. And we pray for safety for them and for energy. And Lord, for those who are sick, especially with this virus, Lord, we pray your blessing upon them and that you would speak to their need of you at this time. And finally, Father, we pray for our family, both here at the Beacon and also nationwide. Lord, bless us. 
Lord, keep our eyes fixed firmly on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. For those of our brothers and sisters who are sick or mourning amongst us, Lord, bless them with your peace, which passes all understanding. Bless them with your comfort, Lord, and be to them what man can never be, a father, a real father who knows and understands all their problems. And help us now, Father, to free up our minds and open up to you and to your word today. Thank you for Anthony, for James and for Glenn and all on the, on the leadership team, that they would know your wisdom and their, your leading, Father. And now we ask that you bless Anthony as he opens your word to us. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our wonderful, risen Saviour. Amen. Good morning, hope you can uh, all hear me. Um, I've been asked um, to pick some songs that would be helpful um, for us on this Easter Sunday. Um, so what do we do uh, about singing at the moment when we cannot meet together? Um, I've really missed um, playing drums um, and being involved um, um, in, um, in the worship at church. Singing for Christians is a big part of worship. It's one way in which we praise and show our love and appreciation to God. At a time like this, when we cannot meet together, I would encourage you to listen to some Christian music. For me, it helps me keep my mind on the things of God. I have listened, uh, listed some songs for today um, from YouTube that will be shared. These all have lyrics that come up on the screen, so you can sing along if you wish to. You might want to belt them out in your living room, listen to them, or like us, put them on so Alice can dance around. There is also a wealth of other Christian music that you can find on Spotify or Apple Music, which can really help us at this time. So the songs that I've chosen for today are first of all, See What a Morning. And this is the Easter song um, for our church. A verse that I particularly like is the second verse that says, See Mary weeping, where is he laid? As in sorrow she turns from the empty tomb. He is a voice speaking, calling her name. It's the master, the Lord, raised to life again. This shows us the sadness and grief of Good Friday turned into joy and gladness of Easter Sunday as Christ is risen from the dead. The second song I've chosen is Happy Day by Tim Hughes. We haven't done this much at church, but it is a real celebratory bouncy tune. It starts with greatest day in history. Death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. This song talks about how great today is. It is a celebration that Jesus is not dead, but alive. Death could not hold him. The next song is Christ is Risen, He is Risen Indeed by Keith and Kristen Getty. The final verse says, The power that raised him from the grave now works in us to powerfully save. He frees our hearts to live his grace. Go tell of his goodness. This is a challenge to us today and every day um, for, that it is for us to share this message with others. How can we do that today? Even when most of us are at home, there are still many ways in which we can share this amazing news with those around us. Whether that is through social media, through talking with friends, Today is a great opportunity to share our faith and hope with others. The next song is a classic, Thine Be The Glory. I feel that out of all the songs, this is probably the one that we sing best as a congregation. I love this verse. Lo, Jesus meets us, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom. Let the church with gladness, hymns of triumph sing. For her Lord now liveth, Death has lost its sting. At a time like this, and when there is much fear and gloom, we can be glad that the Lord lives. We do not have to fear death because, what, because of what Jesus has done for us. Uh, the next song is called Forever, and it's by Carrie Jo. Um, and the lyrics of this song are almost like a battle cry um, with the victory of Christ. Um, some of them say, the war on death was waged the power of hell forever broken. And it goes on to say, now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated. Uh, mine and Mark's prayer for us all today is that each of us are filled with this truth. Um, 
that Christ has overcome death for each and every one of us today. And finally, um, I've picked um, a few kids songs. Um, these are one, two, three, Jesus is alive, God's not dead, and Lord, I lift your name on high. Um, there are some songs that, these are some songs that talk about Jesus rising from the dead. Um, share with us your best dance moves. So maybe kids, you could um, send some videos over uh, of you bopping around in your living room. Um, I'm in a good position on those drums. Um, so I see the moves. I know uh, which one of you has got great moves. So let's see some of those later on, maybe. So I just pray that these songs and others will be helpful to you. I will allow you to celebrate today that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our Bible reading this morning is from Luke chapter 24, and we're starting to read at verse 1. Jesus has risen. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the son of man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Well, thank you to, to Glyn and the others for, uh, for taking part this morning. It's great, isn't it, to see the, the different faces and, and hear the different, uh, the different voices uh, as we go into our time of reflection, we thought we'd share a short video which reminds us of the one that we celebrate uh, this morning. Bear with me a moment because I'm going to have to bring it to the front of our screens. This is where everything could go horribly wrong. Uh, the sound is a little bit distorted at the start, but it, it doesn't last, uh, last for very long. So let's see how we, uh, let's see how we do.
Okay, hopefully you can uh, see me again now. Um, um, it's difficult, as Mark has said, to, to sing together on Zoom because there's a slight, uh, slight delay in sound between different devices. But we thought it might be, uh, might be good to do some brief responses where, where the delay is less important. Now you'll know the sort of thing, I say a line and then we all say the next line together. We don't do this very often at the Beacon, but churches have been doing this for, for many centuries. And I think today is a, is a good day for us to, to give it a go. And it will also allow us a moment when we'll all be able to hear each other together declaring our faith in Jesus. So I'm just going to unmute everyone uh, just for, uh, for a little while. Um, so uh, most, people, most people are unmuted. And, uh, I'm going to bring up some words. And please respond after me if, uh, if you're able to, to do so. Let's, uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, here we go. I'll say the words in plain text and then we'll join in, in the words in bold. So, the Lord be with you. The Lord is risen. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He has defeated the powers of death. He has the word of eternal life. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Well done. Okay, I'm now going to mute everyone again. <laughs> there you go everyone's muted again if only i had this power in actual church and not just in virtual church you know in these uh, in these recent weeks uh, i've been reminded of a, an old nursery rhyme that i read when i was uh, when i was much younger 
In fact, uh, for today, I rooted out my old book, which is, which is this one, the second ladybird book of, of nursery rhymes. And uh, on page 46 is this, uh, is this rhyme, Old Mother Hubbard. I wonder if you, you wonder if you know it. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to fetch her dog a bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare. And so the poor dog had none. Well, all our, all our, cupboards, um, may, our cupboards may not be completely empty this Easter, but they may not be as full of things as they normally are. And of course, other things are empty as well. You might have seen pictures on the news or online, empty cities, empty towns, empty roads and motorways, empty countryside and beaches, empty parks and cinemas, empty cafes and businesses, empty shelves in supermarkets, empty schools, although some of us might be okay with that. Even the church building that we normally meet in is empty at the moment. We tend to think that emptiness is a bad thing, it's a sad thing. And of course that's often the case. Like old Mother Hubbard, maybe you go to the fridge for a late night snack and the fridge is empty. Someone has beaten you to it. Or worse, you pick up a, a carton of juice or, or milk only to realise that somebody's put it back in the fridge empty. I wonder if you have someone in your house who, uh, who does that. Or anyone in your house who leaves an empty loo roll in the loo roll holder. Or you get in the car and you realise you need to fill it with petrol because it's very close to empty. And more seriously, at the moment, of course, for some people, their bank balances are going down towards empty, and that's a struggle. We like life to be full, not empty, don't we? We like our days to be, to be busy, not too busy, of course, but with enough to keep us happy because full is better than empty. No one wants an empty heart or empty hands or empty promises. No one goes into a cafe and orders an empty English breakfast. If you're going to have a cooked breakfast, it wants to be a full English breakfast. Empty is bad and boring, whereas full is good and satisfying. Except that Jesus' resurrection gives us another view. Our church building may be empty today, but so is Jesus too. And that's a great thing. Jesus is risen. Death has lost its sting. Sin and Satan are defeated. An empty tomb is good news. An empty tomb actually is great news. In the passage that Jenny read to us a few moments ago, we read that just as the, the sun was rising, Mary and the other women came to Jesus' tomb and they found it empty. And finding the empty tomb didn't make them feel particularly good. They were frantic and confused. And of course, that makes sense to begin with. But then they hear the reason why the tomb is empty. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. And so the empty tomb gave them hope. The empty tomb was good news. And it's good news for us too. The empty tomb reminds us that despite the strength of our sins for which Jesus took on himself on the cross, God was even stronger. Empty, in this case, means that Jesus is alive, that God has dealt with our sin, that death has been defeated, and that new life is possible for us too. So empty, in this case, is good. If you're walking out in some woods and you come across the cracked shell of a bird's egg, you would know that a baby bird had been born from it. The empty shell means new life. And perhaps you can think about that later on if you're eating your Easter eggs. 
So sometimes emptiness is a good thing. When something's empty, it's ready to be filled, like our own lives. We know that Jesus himself said that he came to bring life, life in all its fullness. And if there's any emptiness in our hearts this morning, Jesus can fill that emptiness with his life. If there's any emptiness in our lives this morning, Jesus can fill that emptiness with his resurrection life. We know that many people around the world are experiencing suffering and heartbreak at the moment. The message of Easter is that God takes suffering on himself and he gives life and hope to all those who trust him. The message of the Bible is that Jesus willingly went to death on our behalf, but he couldn't be held to the cross by the nails and he couldn't be kept in the tomb by a stone. He is risen and he lives forever. And the Bible tells us that he gives life to everyone who believes in him. The tomb is empty, and that's a good thing. It's great news. Let's pray together. We thank you, Father, that you have loved us so much that you sent your one and only son to die for our sins. But we're thankful, Lord, that his story doesn't end with his death, but that we serve a risen saviour, one who's promised to give us life in all its fullness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just before James closes for us, I'm going to invite us to listen to a, a song that's been written, written by a friend of mine about the resurrection. You'll, uh, you'll recognize the tune, probably, so you might, uh, you might like to sing at home, particularly if you're on, if you're on your own, uh, if, if you can. So again, bear with me while I just uh, get the video up on our screens for us.
Hi everyone. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm, I can just see Anthony at the moment, which is quite weird, but um, it's lovely uh, to be able to speak to you all and to see you all this morning, uh, to be able to connect. It's nice in some respects to talk to a camera and it not be Friday afternoon uh, and actually be Sunday morning and everyone be there. So that's really lovely. Uh, a couple of quick notices uh, for this week to let you know where we are. Uh, as you know, it's the Easter holiday, so all of our normal activities are cancelled, uh, not running at the moment, uh, we're having a break for a little period of time, but they will be up and running again soon. Uh, what we'd like to encourage you to do over the next few weeks is to take the opportunity um, to, to utilise what's going on week by week. Um, so hopefully you'll know that there's house groups happening each week. So there's a house group happening on a Monday night, a Tuesday night and a Wednesday night. We'd love you to get involved with those. If you're not already uh, connected to one of those groups, please do let us know. It will be lovely to have you join us uh, to be able to share. It's very similar to this sort of time, uh, seeing, being able to see people and connect. Uh, there's an opportunity to share and to be able to pray together. And we re really do want to encourage you uh, to join together, to be able to see people connect, see how others are, and to pray into different situations. It would be great if that's something you want to do. Uh, and say, if you're not linked to anyone, please do let us know. We'll find a group that works for you. There's also other groups that are going to be happening and different things. So we've had a pastor's elders deacons meeting uh, over Zoom already, and we're looking at other opportunities we've got to see when else we can meet. Please do keep an eye on our Facebook page as well uh, and the church website. We'll be sharing things on there. And if you've got YouTube, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. So there's different videos that pop up at different points. On a Tuesday and Thursday, uh, Anthony and myself will be working through the Psalms. Uh, so we've done the first three so far. And Tuesday, Psalm 4 will come on. We're just taking a few minutes to reflect on what that Psalm says, pray into our particular context uh, and connect with you and spend a little bit of time just joining with you and thinking on those things. So I really would encourage you to check out the church website if you can't go on Facebook, keep an eye on Facebook, like our page if you haven't already done so, uh, or go onto the YouTube channel. There's lots of different ways to connect at the moment. And again, if you're unsure, please do just let us know. Uh, either text or call or email, whichever is the easiest thing to do, and we will try and direct you as best we can so that you can connect with the church and connect with others at this particular time. We do want to encourage you. We are praying for you. Uh, we're hopefully uh, speaking to you as well. Uh, we've spoken to most people in the church so far, I think, but we will be contacting everyone, see how people are. But if there are specific things we can be praying for you and specific situations, please do let us know. Uh, we want to know what's going on. We want to know what's happening with you. So if there's something specific uh, and really important that's going on, please do share those with the church. There's just a couple of things uh, I want to read uh, as we bring our time to an end. This is something that someone, uh, one of our friends from UBM shared on Facebook uh, last night uh, and I just want to encourage you this and then I'm going to read uh, a little portion from God's word as we end our time together but it says this the very first Easter was not in a crowded worship space with singing and praising on the very first Easter the disciples were locked in their houses it was dangerous for them to come out they were afraid they wanted to believe the good news they heard from the women that Jesus had risen but it seemed too good to be true they were living in a time of such despair and such fear. If they left their homes, their lives and the lives of the loved ones might be at risk. Could a miracle really happen? Could life really have won over death? Could this time of terror and fear really be coming to an end? Alone in their homes, they dared to believe that hope was possible that the long night was over and morning had broken, that God's love was the most powerful of all, even though it didn't seem quite real yet. Eventually, they were able to leave their homes when the fear and danger had subsided. They went around celebrating and spreading the good news that Jesus was risen and love was the most powerful force on the earth. This year, we might get to experience a taste of what that first Easter was like still in our homes, daring to believe that hope is on the horizon. Then, after a while, when it is safe for all people, when it is the most loving choice, we will come out, gather together, singing and shouting the good news that God brings life even out of death, that love always has the final say. This year, we might get the closest taste we have had yet to what that first Easter was probably like. I'm just going to close uh, with the words from Romans uh, 8, uh, right at the end, uh, one of Paul's great sort of benediction, benedictions and words of encouragement to the church, uh, for maybe where some of us feel, but enjoy the encouragement that Paul wants the church to know at this time. He says, I am convinced that neither death nor life, 
neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Uh, we're going to officially sort of finish our time together uh, and close. Um, and, and we're just going to have a few moments, uh, a good opportunity uh, to sort of unmic everyone uh, and unmute you uh, and give you the opportunity to say hello. Uh, maybe just uh, bear in mind in this time that everyone can probably see a different screen to you. Um, so you'll be able to see some people, they might not be able to see you. But just uh, maybe take the opportunity to wish everyone a happy Easter uh, and, and encourage each other. But it's great to be able to see you and it's great to have been able to connect this morning of, of all mornings. Uh, at such a special time and to be able to encourage each other so it's lovely to have been with you uh, and we're gonna we're gonna open it up and we're just gonna see what happens and see how this goes <laughs>